Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for the, the 2013 Christmas special. So uh, we've got three Christmas wines here and uh, I went to Total Wine and went to Total Wine and more to uh, uh, get these wines. Uh, they are the new, uh, they're the new kids in town and uh, they, uh, they're a national chain, they're out of Maryland. And uh, they just opened up here in San Antonio a couple, like three weeks ago, I guess. And uh, after they had uh, some delays in their opening because of uh, one of the other chains here was uh, fighting their application. But uh, the, it, it all like not went away, but they had like a delay of so many months and that deadline came and went and they opened up. So um, I welcome them here because that means more competition. It means getting more wines that... I'm not, I don't have access to. As a matter of fact, I've already been able to buy wine from them that nobody else in town carries. So to me, it's just like, you know what? If, uh, if they carry it, I'll buy it from them. If some other, some other place carries, I'll buy it from them. Uh, I do plan to do like a blog post instead of a video kind of talking about the uh, San Antonio wine shops that I go to. Uh, these are not, this won't be an exhaustive list of all the wine shops in San Antonio but ones that I go to. So that's going to be more of a blog post uh, sometime next year and be more of a local interest thing, though if you want to read it, you can. But um, so let's get started. Uh, Christmas wines. So um, I went, when I walked into the shop, I said, look, I want to get some, I want to get some three Christmas wines. <coughs> they don't have to be necessarily the traditional <coughs> Christmas wines, but they could be. Uh, but I'm looking for interesting. I'm looking for something different. And... Um, you know, I'd been in the I'd been in the store the week before, chatted up a couple people, let them know who I was. Uh, so the gentleman who helped me out uh, remembered uh, talking with me for like a couple minutes, really. And um, so I told him I wanted one white <clears throat> and two reds. So um, we went ahead and uh, checked out a few things, uh, and pretty much whatever his suggestions were, I went with. I didn't really go in with any preconceived notions of what I wanted. Um, and ended up all three of these are imports. So none of these are domestic wines. So <coughs> none of these are actually, uh, I would consider necessarily a traditional, um, in the sense of, uh, uh, what call it, you know, traditional Pinot Noir and Zinfandel and, uh, uh, what else? Chardonnay those types of things. So we went with some, some interesting things and I think they'll be really good. So this, this spans a quite a spectrum. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first wine we're going to have here is the Arthur Metz 2012 uh, Gewürztraminer. This is an Alsatian wine. Um, now Alsace is an area that, uh, if uh, you are familiar with it, is been divided between or, or traded between Germany and France over the years through wars. Uh, Alsace-Lorraine, that, that area is in the northeastern part of France. Um, so they have a lot of German influence in there, a lot, a lot of French influence. You'll see, um, you know, Arthur Metz, that sounds very German. It is, I'm assuming, a German name. Uh, uh, Gewürztraminer is very German sounding rather than French sounding. Uh, though it's, uh, Gewürztraminer is uh, a relative of the Traminer grape uh, in, out of Italy, I believe, if I remember correctly. And... Um, so let's talk about Arthur Metz. Um, now, this is one of those cases where they have a website and most of it's in French and it's really kind of a lot of marketing. There really wasn't a whole lot of history I could get from them, but they were founded in 1904. Uh, they have vineyards all, all throughout Alsace. Their actual winery is located in the northern part of Alsace, uh, about 20 minutes um, northwest-ish of uh, Strasbourg, which is the capital uh, of Alsace, and um, they make wines from 
all the normal Alsatian varietals. Now you have the Four Nobles, which is Gewürztraminer, Muscat, Riesling, and uh, Pinot Gris. And then they also, um, uh, they also make uh, wines from Pinot Blanc, Sylvaner, Oxera, uh, Pinot Noir, Clevener de Heiligenstein. Uh, that is not an, an, a varietal, actually. Uh, it's a geographical designation. It's actually the Sauvignon, the pink Sauvignon wine, or, or pink skin Sauvignon rose grape. Uh, and it's from the Traminer family of grapes, so another relative of this. Um, so I briefly mentioned uh, the four noble grapes. So the four noble grapes, these are grapes that can be um, late harvested, made into late harvest wines. That's why they're called the noble grapes. Um, there are other noble grape designations throughout the world, um, but this is when you think about the noble grapes of, of Alsace, this is what we're talking about. Um, looking at the website, it looks like a pretty really modern facility. And uh, this exact wine is not on their website. Uh, they have a Gewürztraminer, but not this one. This is called the Epice Poisson, which um, that means uh, what very, not, not, what does it mean? It's epic, a uh, powerful, sorry, epic, powerful spice. And that ties into the Gewürztraminer grape because it tends to be what they call a spicy grape. And not spicy hot, but spices and spices. So um, we're going to check this out. Oh, um, and, and I don't have much else about the wine. I don't know how much how it's aged. I don't know if it's stainless. If there's any oak treatment. I doubt there's any oak. But um, let's check it out. I, I don't do a lot of conversion meters. Um, so I was real excited to try this. And I don't do a lot of Alsatian wine. So that's another thing that I really, you know, wanted to try. Do something Alsatian. You know, I could see, um, and this could be, you know, one of your first course wine. So let's check it out. Uh, pear, a lot of pear on it. I even get maybe like a cantaloupe. I wouldn't say I necessarily get spices, but, um, get some apple and pear. So very Chardonnay like, right? But almost a little... Almost a little waxy. But I wouldn't necessarily get any spices off the aroma. Uh, a little floral though, maybe white flowers. So something that's, that I don't typically pick up from Chardonnays. So let's check it out. Pretty tasty, by the way. Uh, price is sixteen. Well, seventeen ninety nine list. Uh, got it for sixteen nineteen because they have a mixed six pack type of deal, um, and it depends on the pricing. Though I'll go through that a little bit later. Um, on the palate, and now this has been chilled. It was in the fridge basically for days. Uh, I took it out twenty minutes ago, maybe. So it's had time to warm up a little bit. But still, still get the pear, not so much the apple, but more the pear. And a little bit of honey, a little honeyness. Uh, so there might have been a little botrytis here. And, then, and I know honey is also a component of Alsatian wines, or at least white wines, uh, or it can be. So there might have been a little bit of botrytis in this. Um, <coughs> it's got, I'd say, medium plus acid. So it's got a good amount of acid on it, but it's not overpowering. Uh, mouth is watering a good amount. So great wine to start things off, get the, get the juices flowing, get the palate going. Um, you know, I, I, I see this as, you know, a typical good starter wine with, with your cheeses, um, with uh, uh, like a... Not a, necessarily a meat plate, but like a cheese plate, some fruit uh, to get things going with that. Um, if you're if you've got some other type of light fare that you're doing, you just want to just get things started. This is a nice, great way to start the evening if you're going to have like a dinner party for Christmas, or you're going to bring the wine to to a Christmas party. Um, you know, nice, nice wine. I like this a lot. 
And I really, uh, on the aroma, I, I really get, I really feel like I get this cantaloupe rind off of it. Pears, honey, maybe a little white pepper. Now that I'm really kind of delving into the palate of the, you know, kind of a white pepper thing. So there's your spice. Um, pretty good. I like this a whole heck of a lot. I would totally recommend this one, uh, especially something just to start things off. You know, and I like new and interesting and I'm always trying different things. I always like to try new, all, the, all the different stuff. So I totally would, would go for this. Yeah. I think your guests would love it. Um, it's not too geeky. I, I, when I was up in Jersey, I kind of geeked out a little bit on wine, and I was pretty much the only one that really liked all the wines we had. Everybody else is kind of like, yeah, okay. And I was like, oh, this is cool because of this, this, and this. So this is a good wine. It's, it's not too geeky. Uh, it's going to be interesting, and I think it pair really well with, with uh, some of your lighter fare, especially your cheeses and fruit plate. Um, some salads, that type of stuff. Um, yeah, good stuff. So uh, let's move on to the next wine. <coughs> I'm not going to take any actual break breaks. We're just going to go straight through. Well, you would have already seen the little curtain thing anyway. Um, so we're going to go to the next wine. Now, this one, uh, again, not typical of where I would uh, be getting a wine from. Now, this is the uh, 2012 Porta uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Reserva, uh, from Chile, and it's from the Aconcagua Valley. I think that's how it's pronounced. Now, I asked somebody how to pronounce it. There was a winemaker here in San Antonio a couple months ago, and I asked him how to pronounce it, and I think he said Aconcagua, and I kept, because I say Aconcagua, but it's saying it's Aconcagua, I think is what, where the accent is. But anyway, so Chile, and it's a cab. All right, so uh, not something that we typically look for from Chile, but I know they've been doing some good stuff with cabs. Uh, they've been getting some, some attention on their Cabernet Sauvignons. Uh, now, this is, um, again, this is one of those wineries that it's, especially in South American wines, um, it, it's really hard to get any solid information. They sometimes have websites, sometimes they don't. Um, they'll have, they'll be bodegas and they're really more like co-ops or they're growers and somebody just kind of collects all the wine and makes it. Um, in this case, there is a website, um, and I'll, I'll read where, where they call it Porta, which Porta means door, okay? Um, but they're, I'll read their little uh, marketing fluff. It is the door to the mysteries of the land. Uh, Porta captures the essence of the land where wine was created and opens the door directly to the terroir. So that's why they call it Porta. Um, I said, there's not much else. It's owned by the Dos Andes, Dos Andes Wines, um, but that website is pretty outdated. It, it's like two, three, almost four years old on some of the wines that they list. Um, so it's really kind of difficult to get much else uh, on it. Uh, according to, I think it was the actual Porta website. Uh, it may not be this vintage, but uh, it spends six to eight months in French oak. Uh, got this at Total Wine and More for eight ninety. dollars oh, sorry, well, it's eight ninety nine dollars list, so did, uh, the uh, discount was eight oh nine. dollars So on the nose, it's, it's kind of, it's a little meaty, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. I would, if I was smelling this wine initially, I'd be thinking Syrah type of, type of wine. They're kind of bacony, you know, that, that's real to me, you see meat and meaty and, and savory and bacon. You're like, you're, you're going down that Syrah path. There's a bit of creaminess to it, but I, I, I guess some red fruit, but the, the, it's not, it's not heavily fruit. It's not a lot of fruit forwardness to it um, that I would that would 
think more with the cab, like the cassises and the red fruits and the dark, the, the, you know, red fruits and cassises. I don't really get that. Not that it's a bad thing. <coughs> it's just that I wasn't expecting this nose. Yeah, really, it's, it's, it's more savory than anything else. So kind of a meaty wine. Let's see how it tastes. Maybe it tastes more fruity. If there was any question that this was a cab, it's been answered. Peppers, green peppers, the pyrazines really come through on this. Um, it doesn't, it does, definitely does not have that Syrah taste. It, it's, it has a little more fruitiness to it. It doesn't have that bacon fat, doesn't have that savoriness, doesn't really have that meatiness to it on the palate. Um, it has that wet feeling inside. I don't know how to describe that. I don't know what, but sometimes I, 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 I describe it as it feels like water, but then it sounds like I'm saying it's a watered down wine or a weak. It's not, it's just, it really just, it's like a kind of like drinking. It, 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 I don't want to make it sound like a bad thing because it's, I don't. It's not a bad thing. It's just kind of kind of that that liquidy water feeling in my mouth. There wasn't the tannins aren't really heavy, or they don't last a long time. I get a little more wood now on the nose. Tastes a little wood. Um, the, the red fruits are coming through a little bit more now. Um, tannins, I'm going to say, are medium. They're, they're not heavy on the tannins. Um, Acidity is medium. This is a, you know, a, a pretty even-keeled wine. Um, it, it's, it's not, I, I don't think it's necessarily spectacular, um, but it's a nice wine. It's a $9 bottle of wine. So for $9, bucks, you are you're getting, I think, a really good value out of it. Um, but it's not something that I, I think I'm going to go crazy over. Um, but for nine bucks, it, it's, it's tasty. It, it'll, it's a different type of Cabernet. So if you want to bring it to the, you want to use it for dinner. Um, so what, what would we pair it with? I'd still probably pair it with like a steak, um, maybe a prime rib. Though I, don't know, I don't know if the tannins are, are enough to really handle the, the fat content of a prime rib or a ribeye. You may need a leaner cut of meat. Um, or if you were doing something a little bit meatier, even though the palate doesn't have that meatiness, the aroma does, the, 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 the nose has that meatiness to it. So if you're in a, like in a brisket type of thing where, you know, a lot of that fat has, has dissolved out in a brisket, it's like a really, like a pot roast. I think that would be awesome if you're doing pot roast for, uh, for your, uh, Christmas dinner. I think it would really great with the pot roast, honestly. And the thing is, those green peppers keep coming in and out. And that's, that's really what brings me back to the interesting part of the wine is it really has that, that, that green pepper uh, quality, but it's not, I don't think it's over the top. And like, I don't get it every single time I drink it. So it's there sometimes and sometimes not. Maybe because I'm focusing on other things. So I'm not really, I'm like trying to ignore maybe certain things. I'm trying to find other things to get into the wine. But I think it's a pretty good wine. Uh, I said, I don't think it's spectacular. Um, I, I, I like the Gewürztraminer better than, than this one, but I would, if you ask me, would it be a good wine to buy? I would tell you, yes, I would definitely recommend buying the wine, uh, especially at $9. It's, it's pretty good value. I think it's a Chilean wine. It's something different. Cab. I'm looking forward to drinking a little more of that, um, uh, with some dinner later this week. All right, well, let's go to the third wine. We're, we're running through these wines real quick. <clears throat> One thing I did is I, I kind of took suggestions from my dad. Instead of having the websites and trying to go, I, a couple days ago, I took all my notes about these wines and it seems like it's doing a little bit better on the flow of the show. All right, so this is the 2007 Canetto 
Vino Noble di Montepulciano. How did I mess that one up? Vino Noble di Montepulciano. All right, so 2007. Uh, also got this on Red Wine Reserva. Uh, also got this at Total Wine. Now, this was the most expensive of, of the three. Uh, it, it retails for $29.99. Got it for $26.99. Now, what's up with this wine? All right, so this is one of those uh, Tuscan wines. And uh, it actually uses the Sangiovese grape. Or Okay, so <laughs> the Vino Noble um, is primarily a Sangiovese grape uh, or a wine made from the Sangiovese grape. So let's kind of go through the history real quick um, before I get into the actual winery. So uh, it dates from an era where, or, or the name Nob Nobile, uh, from one of the websites, actually the website says, the name Nobile dates from the era when higher quality wines were exclusively reserved for noble families according to that website from the 18th century. Well, yeah, they were using the word noble with the wines for actually a long time um, to kind of differentiate them that, that they, were, they were really good wines from the area. The first time the actual word no, nobile shows up on a label is 1933. Um, Adamo Fenete, uh, who, whose family still owns the Tenuta San Anguise uh, winery, they used it on their label. Uh, so that was the first time we actually used that designation, the Vino Noble de Montepulciano, okay? Um, I didn't write down in my notes what it was called prior to that. But um, it, it's, it's a wine that's been made since like the 1300s, uh, or wines have been made in the area since like the 1300s. And it's been very well respected for, for quite a long time. And actually the older wines, like the 1300s, 1400s, I think even the 1500 wines, they were a sweeter wine. Uh, they, were, they were dried out, the grapes were dried out, and so you got a sweeter wine out of it. Now these are fermented fully and they're dry. I mean, they're, they're fermented dry instead of raisining out, you know, becoming a raisining, raisinating the, the grapes to get sweeter wines, you get drier wines. Um, this, particular, um, uh, this particular winery, uh, Let's see, I think this is actually from the website. Uh, has been noted as one of the finest growers of Vino Noble de Montepulciano since the early decades of the 20th century um, when agronomist V. Montanari and A, I don't know what the V and the A stand for, uh, Musiani published an official ranking of the finest vineyard sites found in the Appalachian uh, back in 1933, uh, judging the Canetto Vineyard as one of the premium terroir in the country of Montepulciano, or the state or the area it says the county. I'm sorry, county. I said country in that that part of of Tuscany. Um, a group of Swiss inventors bought the bought the vineyard in '87, and they, they did it so they could start. They wanted like their own wine, um, and they, they you know they make wine for themselves and their friends, and then eventually you just started growing into more people liking it, and they eventually started selling it, or they might have been selling it to their friends this whole time, but. They definitely were, they, they, uh, the wine started getting more recognition, so they started selling it. <coughs> now, again, this is uh, the, uh, the actual website, you know, has pretty much just what I told you. Uh, this particular wine is 100% Sangiovese. However, they can use some other grapes in there um, for it. Uh, it has to be at least 70% Sangiovese. Um, and it's called the clone, it's, they, they use the clone called uh, Brunello, Br Brunello Gentile. Um, just like Brunello di Montalcino, okay? The Brunello di Montalcino is, the cl is a clone of Sangiovese that they use in Montalcino. So the uh, Brunello uh, is the clone they use uh, in Montepulciano, uh, the, the Sangiovese clone. Uh, and it looks like small cylindrical plums, and that's what Brunello in Italian means is plum. They can also use Cagnolo Nero, uh, 10 to 20%, and then uh, Mamolo is the, the last of the, the native grapes that they, they will use in it. But this was 100% Sangiovese. Um, to be a Reserva, it has to be aged total for three years. 
Now, there's some conflicting, conflicting information. Um, some, some ways of reading it makes it think that you have to have three years of oak. Um, it doesn't. Um, the winery um, ages it in Slovenian and French oak for 18 months. Um, but Wikipedia says it must be an oak for the whole three years. Um, so it's one of those things where when you're looking at aging laws and maybe because of how it's being translated or it's just not clear, um, I've seen this with Italian and Spanish wines where they say it has to be aged for three years or two years or four years, and then they talk about oak, they sometimes aren't clear or whoever is giving you the information isn't clear as to whether it's all oak or it just has to age for a certain amount of time in oak, then they age it in bottle, um, or there's a minimum like 18 months, and then the rest is in bottle. But it's three years total. Uh, this is the 2007, so um, it's able to, so 2010 would have been when it's released. So it's, it's you know, we're talking a five-year-old wine here, six-year-old wine. I think that's all the information on it. Not much else. Let's check it out. And it was an Italian wine. I mean, I'm Italian. We, we, Italian Christmas. Come on. We're going to have Italian food. So off the nose, honestly, there's really not a whole lot I'm getting off the nose. So let's do my Kevin Israeli. Okay, a little bit more now intense. So it's really light on the nose. Uh, some red fruit, I can't really get more specific than that. Maybe cherry. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little sour cherry. I definitely get like cedar box, you know, cigar box out of it. I wouldn't say a whole lot of spices. But like cigar box, uh, none of the Italian dust. I, I Well, I usually get the dust in the palate, but I don't get that some of that typical stuff that I get from Italian wines off the nose. Yeah, just really kind of sour cherry, a little cedar box, not much floral, no earth. That's about it. So let's, um, let's check it out. Mmm. All kinds of stuff going on now. Where do I start? Tannins. Tannins are off the chart. They're, they're, they're high. Tannins are high. You need to have some good food with this. Um, some meaty stuff, meatballs, sausage, you know, that type of stuff. Uh, pot roast. <laughs> I, and it's kind of funny because pot roast is kind of, can be kind of fatty, and I don't, I just said that this wine I wouldn't necessarily put with fatty stuff, but it, <coughs> that's where the tannins to break down the fats, but the, the, the flavor profile, I think, would work with a pot roast. This, you need, you need something to attack those tannins, uh, to tame them, to really, to really balance the wine with your food. Um, there's kind of like a, a mintiness to it, um, like, like, a, like a cherry mint. I mean, I'm loving the wine. I'm absolutely just and phenomenally loving the wine. When I was doing my research for these wines, this is, again, one of those, quote, secrets of Italy that, you know, you get some really good quality wines for a good price. I mean, a $27, I'm sorry, $30 bottle, that's, <coughs> that's for a secret wine, that's pretty darn good. So I can imagine you can probably find some of these uh, for maybe 10 bucks cheaper, not this wine, obviously, but some good quality wines that are maybe 10 bucks cheaper. I get more of the, oops, I get more of that cedar box. Um, it, is, it is really kind of woodsy. Yeah, that, that is, it's, it's not too minty, but like I said, it's, it's a little tart. So the sour cherry's gotten tarter with a, it was like a hint of mint to it and some spice, some wood, tannins. Uh, acidity isn't, I'd say acidity's probably medium plus, but uh, my mouth is definitely watering. 
Um, I think it's pretty phenomenal. Um, I really want to drink this, but I want to, I want to have something food wise with it. I want to have some good pasta with this thing. Maybe a red sauce. You know, it's a little dusty. It's old world. I mean, you you can you you know this is old world. It's not fruit forward. It's it's earthy. It has more earth driven tones. Uh, there's a little bit of red fruit to it. Um, I, I'm I'm absolutely just enjoying this wine. It's pretty spectacular. As I pour the rest of it out, I know, sad. Um, yeah, all three are recommends. My, my favorite, obviously, is the Vino Noble, followed by the Gewürztraminer, and then the Cab. Pretty good. You know, again, nine dollar bottle of wine. You're getting good value. So we, we got a you know good good range of wines here. <coughs> um, real quick, I'm going to talk about Total Wines pricing. Um, so one of the things that they they tout is they they tout that they have you know big buying power, and so they're going to get really good prices for everybody. And everybody likes to say that one. Um, they also talk about they have uh, Winery Direct deal so you go into the shop and there's uh it'll be a sign or you know a little shelf talk or whatever and tell you that it's winery direct it means they had a deal from the winery so that you're you're gonna get like i guess a better deal than normal retail i don't know i i'd, I'd have to actually look at these wines price them compared to other people and price them with the winery charges for them a lot of times wineries like if you buy directly from the winery, you're paying the same retail as you'd buy at the wine shop. So buying from the winery isn't necessarily going to be cheaper um, because they're trying to make sure that you have that value. Um, you know, if, if my wine shop's going to charge you 30 bucks for the bottle of wine, well, that's because the winery is suggesting that you sell it for 30 bucks. So they, they, their, they say their value is 30 bucks, even though they sold it to the distributor or the wine shop for less, obviously. So, um, but I'd have to, I, I'd have to actually get certain bottles and see which ones are winery direct and kind of price them out and see you know, how, how much of a good deal you're getting. Now, if you have uh, six bottles, uh, well, mix six discount. And I actually got one, I actually got six bottles that particular day. Um, I got uh, one of the sparkling wines for the New Year special. And then I got a couple Sautern, <coughs> one for me and one for a friend of mine. The, 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 uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, I just if, if a lot of the person never watches the videos anyway. But the uh, the chateau I went to um, back in Bordeaux, the Sauterne one that I went to, I bought. I fe- that's what the wine that nobody carries in Texas other than these guys. So um, I'm excited to be able to get that wine. So bought it from a friend uh, since she's never had that wine. So uh, sometime in the next week or two, uh, I'll drop that off. But. Um, uh, so yeah, you got six wines and you get a discount. It looks like it's a 10% discount uh, on the wine. Now, if the wines are priced, if the last number is a seven, however, those wines are not eligible for a 10% discount. My guess is kind of like world market, if their wine ends at a seven, the price, it's been a, well, world market, if it's a seven, it's already been discounted twice. They've discounted the wine once and if there's a certain price with that, and if it ends at a seven, they they're it's a clearance wine. I'm um, gonna assume the seven on here is similar idea. It's it's a discounted wine already, so they're not gonna give you an additional discount to it. Um, but uh, check them out. I mean, they had a great selection of stuff. I mean, they they tout themselves as having eight thousand wines, I think it is, and I forgot how many thousands of beers. And I mean, they had they had beers from pretty much everywhere. I mean, granted, they had like one beer from Greece. Like one beer from, I think, Ecuador. So it's not like, oh, I want to buy a bunch of Ecuadorian beer and you're going to find three or four labels or whatever. It was like one. So they have like just the one. Um, just Greek wine, just because I just happened to notice that they had like a whole like section of Greek wine. Um, and then probably about 10 labels because, I mean, it was multiples of the same bottle. It was probably about 10 labels maybe. Uh, so that's good. I mean, they're bringing a variety that... <coughs> San Antonio doesn't necessarily have. However, they don't have, I mean, there's, there's stuff that want, other wine shops are going to have that they don't. So to me, it's good to have more variety, more choice amongst the retailers. 
uh, especially since Texas law doesn't allow me to buy from out of state retailers unless they have a presence here in Texas. So, you know, if, if I want to buy from a retailer in Missouri and they're just in Missouri and they ha and they're the only they're the only place that carries that wine, um, they're not supposed to legally send me that wine. Um, they, they could, but they can get a lot of trouble for doing it because they're not licensed to distribute here. Um, that's going to do it for the Christmas episode. Um, next week we'll have the New Year's episode. We're going to have three sparkling wines um, that I've just, you know, I, I bought one of them specifically for the show and then the other two I just kind of have. So uh, I'm happy that one of my, I don't even remember how much I paid for it. I think that was a gift. So uh, so these, these are sparkling wines I've had for a little while. So we're going to do those, pop those corks just because might as well. And um, that's going to do it for this episode. Like I said, look for New Year's. Uh, we'll have some blog posts. I'll have, a, I'll have my, my looking forward to 2014 blog post. I'll have um, other stuff coming up. Episode 300 is coming up. <coughs> I don't have any details other than I'm going to have a 300th episode. It may be here at the table. I'd love to have it in a live audience, but um, it really just kind of depends on the logistics of where I would have it and just, just a bunch of stuff. It may not ever happen as far as live audience, but I'm, I'd love to do that. And if it is, I'll make sure you all know because the whole idea is have it live streamed. All right, so um, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope all of you have a happy holiday. Hope it didn't snow too much on me. Assuming I got the effect going pretty good. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.